Dragonflies can be sometimes easy to photograph if they're willing to perch, but I'm trying to capture shots of those in flight. Dragonflies in flight? Is it even possible to capture shots of dragonflies in flight? Well, that's what I want to talk about in this video a little bit. What I do, how I do it, and you'll see some of the results. It is possible, but I have to warn you, you have to be incredibly patient and persistent if you want to get shots of dragonflies in flight. Hi, I'm Mike Powell. I'm here at Jackson Miles Abbott Wetland Refuge in Northern Virginia, and I'm here trying to photograph one of my favorite subjects, dragonflies. Now, dragonflies can be sometimes easy to photograph if they're willing to perch, but I'm trying to capture shots of those in flight. Dragonflies are small and fast, and these particular species aren't stopping anywhere. They're not hovering, so I've got to try to track them with my lens. Wish me luck. I'll be back with you later with the results. Thanks. And here's a quick overview of the pond at Jackson Miles Abbott Wetland Refuge, a small facility in Northern Virginia, where I like to do a lot of my photography. Here's a patch of lily pads where I'm watching the dragonflies as they fly above the lily pads, back and forth, back and forth, but, the, but, the, but they're unpredictable in the way that they fly. You would have had to have been particularly eagle-eyed to spot the dragonfly that was flying about the lily pads in the previous clip. It was a prince basket tail, a species that's about three inches long, 75 millimeters. This particular species conducts long, repeated patrols low over the water. It flies almost constantly and rarely, if ever, perches. In this first shot, I caught the prince basket tail as it was flying over the lily pads, flying away. Now, obviously, I'd like to have the eyes in focus, as is always the case with photography, but I did in this case. But I really like this shot because not only does it show the, the patterns on the wings of the Prince Basket Tail, it also shows a small eastern amber wing dragonfly perched on the vegetation in the foreground. Now I was shooting with my Canon 7D DSLR and a Tamron 18 to 400 millimeter zoom lens. Those were my tools that I was using this day. And I decided that I wanted to try to get down lower to get closer to eye level with the dragonfly. I like the fact that I had a lot of the habitat in the show, shot that I just showed you, but I wanted to get lower. So the second shot is another one of my attempts. I really love the way that I captured the dragonflies that flew by me and the, the ripples in the water in the background. Photographing dragonflies can be, to be a bit hazardous. Ran into some thorns earlier. I didn't realize I had drawn blood, but when I looked down at my pants, I can see that there are some blood stains on them. And if you look down at my feet, you might be able to see that I fell in the pond already. Unfortunately, it was only, well, not quite half height. So I'm not soaking wet, but got to be a bit more careful. Now, the Prince Basket Tail was not the only dragonfly that was flying over the pond that day. As I circled the pond several times, I spotted this russet-tipped club tail that was flying about in the center of the pond. It never did come near to the shore while I was observing it, but I did manage to get this really cool shot of it as it flew in the air and its wonderful reflection in the water below. So is it possible to photograph a dragonfly in flight? Well, you already knew the answer to that question since I led with this photograph of the Prince Basket tail in flight at the beginning of the post and in the thumbnail. So how did I get this shot? Well, let me just go over the settings that I had in my camera and discuss a little bit the procedure that I used to get a shot like this. As I mentioned earlier, I was shooting with a Canon 7D DSLR and a Tamron 18 to 400 millimeter zoom lens. Um, for this particular shot, it was set at 265 millimeters. I found that I can't track something as small as a dragonfly when I'm zoomed all the way out to 400 millimeters. So that was a factor in, in being able to track the dragonfly. Tracking the dragonfly is the most critical thing. I try to observe the dragonfly, the patterns of its flight, whether or not it chooses to hover, where it chooses to turn around when it's doing its patrols, so that I can try to predict the behavior of the dragonfly. I was shooting at f8, which is usually the sweet spot for this lens at one two thousandth of a second for this shot, which is why the wings are frozen in action. And the ISO is set at 640. Um, this is an older DSLR, so I'm hesitant to go too far above maybe 1600 for the ISO. I was, I had my focusing set 
on uh, the nine points in the center and that that was the, the zone that I was using to try to get the dragonflies that passed through that zone as I was tracking it. Now, I'd like to say that there's a secret to getting shots like this, but it's mostly a matter of patience, persistence, and a little bit of luck. You got to take a lot of shots, get a lot of non-keepers, but eventually you can get some really good shots. I'd like to conclude my video today with a few shots of other dragonflies in flight that I've shot over the years. This past summer, I drove from from Virginia where I live to Seattle, Washington. And while I was in Washington, I had a chance to photograph some dragonflies here. This particular dragonfly is a blue-eyed darner dragonfly that I caught in flight at a wildlife refuge uh, just outside of Olympia, Washington. It's a species that we don't have here on the East Coast, so I was delighted to be able to find it and to photograph it. I was particularly happy that I was able to capture some of the, the markings on the dragonflies' bodies as well as those stunning blue eyes. It's always hard to be able to capture that much detail. While I was in Washington State, I had a chance to climb Mount Rainier, or part of Mount Rainier at least, and in one of the streams on the mountain, I found this dragonfly patrolling up and down along the stream. It was a pretty tough shot to be able to capture it, and I really wasn't sure what it was, and it was only when I came home that I found out that it was a paddle-tailed darner. Once again, I was happy that I was able to kind of pluck it out of midair and capture some of the details, the beautiful markings on its body. I'm retired now, but when I was working, I worked for the government, and the government would periodically send me to European cities like Brussels and Vienna. And while I was there, unlike a lot of people, I didn't spend a lot of time looking at architecture. I ended up trying to find nature subjects to photograph. While I was in Brussels one time, I managed to photograph this green-eyed hawker dragonfly as it was flying towards me. It's kind of a cool shot. There's some uh, blur in the wings as it was coming towards me. Now, the interesting thing about this, it was not shot with my DSLR. It was shot with a Canon SX50 a super zoom point and shoot style camera, which reinforces the idea you don't have to have fancy gear to be able to capture so shots. It's more important to be patient and persistent. This last dragonfly is a spectacular one. It's called a migrant hawker. I took this shot at a botanical garden in the center of Brussels, Belgium. Again, it was one that I shot with a Canon SX50 Super Zoom camera. Gear matters, but not as much as a lot of people believe. I encourage you to go out and try to shoot the most difficult subjects possible, even when success seems to be almost impossible. That's how I got started shooting dragonflies, and it's now uh, sort of one of my passions. I've just started playing around with YouTube, but I have been keeping an almost daily photography blog for the last 10 years. So if you're at all interested in the type of photography that I do, check out uh, my YouTube channel and the link that's there to my photography blog. Thanks for watching.